All right, guys, time to talk about Slime Rancher 2. Let's, let's talk about these chickens real quick. Let's talk about these amazing chickens real quick and, you know, my inability to get the chickens in the box. But Slime Rancher 2, let's have some fun. We're jumping in. While I knew absolutely nothing about Slime Rancher, I was slowly uncovering things that are just super cool about the game. The fact that it has multiple biomes and within those biomes, you're going to find a multitude of different types of slimes, which is pretty daggone cool because I thought, you know, I would just be finding slimes, throwing them in boxes, and then moving on. It's most definitely easy to say, the more I explored, the more I found that there was some crazy things going on within this game. These trash bags guys, these little research drones that give you a little bit of lore and information while you play. Needless to say, I was very surprised that the map ended up being as large as it was, and the way they actually made it where you discover the map was something really cool and unique to me. Of course, they've done this in other games, but I didn't expect it in the slime wrenching world. It's very in-depth. You actually have an awesome tutorial that helps you figure out what are the best things to give particular slimes to get the most out of them and make them the most happy. This comes in handy whenever you're meeting a lardo, by the way. You give them their favorite food and it counts for double of what the regular would have been. On top of that, there are plenty of things to uncover and discover while you play the game and special unlocks that either give you decorations or even just tech tools to help you either fly around the map or unlock different parts based on what it is. You've got a fabricating tool that does quite a bit for you. Going into the lab, which is underneath one of your main areas, when you first spawn in, will give you a lot of different opportunities to upgrade your gear and make your character more versatile. You are either going to get more storage space or the ability to have a jetpack and fly. Maybe you'll have more health or more stamina so you can push around and run faster. They even decided to put teleporters in here so you can port around to different parts of the map without having to run your butt off for the entire time. You have to earn these and you have to unlock them and then you'll have to actually craft them. So the fabrication portion of it does allow you to grind out certain items in the game, which is pretty cool, even though it's a little time consuming. But it is what keeps you playing Slime Rancher. Well, that and the need to go around and uncover all the mysteries of the different types of islands and all the different slimes and figuring out how to make combined slimes so that you have bat fire slimes and then you turn around and well if you're not careful you'll make those ugly ugly trash bag slimes but the exploration in this game is a lot of fun because the map's so large you actually get to do quite a bit and see a lot of different things and to my knowledge this game isn't fully completed yet so we're going to see more biomes, more slimes, more updates as the game fully releases on Xbox and the Game Pass. Oh, and I do feel like mentioning that there are stone hens out there, there are hen hens out there, there are, there's a lot of different chickens out there too. There's probably as many different chickens as there are slimes in this game, which in my opinion is hilarious and great because some of these slimes love to eat meat and they have a favorite type of meat depending on the henny hen hen. Honestly, all in all, the gameplay is really smooth. There are moments where you feel quite rewarded for the efforts that you've put in by uncovering or finding these little secret areas that not only have information for you and lore for you to allow you to further go into the story, but you're also gifted some really awesome items and blueprints that allow you to do and create more throughout the game. Now, I haven't beat the story yet, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I've been having quite the blast just playing around. It's very relaxing. It is very chill. Even though there are times that I get just a little bit aggravated that I've died to, I don't know, jumping off the map because I thought there was a secret passage there and there wasn't, and then you lose all of the inventory. Not your coins, but the inventory. Either way, it was my fault. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I, I can't blame the game for, being, for doing that, honestly. Well, <clears throat> rant over. My first time playing the game, figuring out how to do the gardens, the corrals, the chicken pens, and upgrading these things to make it where they do different things, or they grow faster, or maybe they hold the slimes better, or whatever the case may be, and learning all about the upgrading system within it, it was really slow. I didn't look anything up in the game, I just kind of jumped in and tried to see what exactly this game had to offer. And to be honest with you, about 30 minutes in, I really did get hooked. There was something about farming the little slimes and building their little homes and 
gathering all these different materials for them and building the different biomes that would allow the slimes to prosper and give me all of the plorts so I could give the plorts to the market. Oh, oh yeah, plorts. What the heck's a plort? Really quick to explain, plorts are these little poo-poo things that the slimes drop whenever they eat really good food or just regular food that fits their diet that you can turn around and sell on the market. And well, depending on that day, the market may be up or down depending on the particular plorts that you're selling. So, plorts are also very important for crafting particular items in the fabricator. So you'll actually have to store particular plorts in order to craft particular items such as transporters or jetpacks and eh, just things of that general nature. I like to sell the plorts to get that cash money so I can go upgrade things that I need to upgrade. Now. I think these NPCs talk a little too much and give you a little too little, but they do add to the story and give you a little bit of backstory. They also give you gifts from time to time and they kind of keep you in the loop of all the cool things that are happening on their side that may actually impact you. The gifts they give you sometimes are very impactful, such as the drone archive key. You can actually craft that to get more information from the drones. And then sometimes they'll give you a decoration that you could make your slime sanctuary look a little bit cooler, I guess. Either way you slice it, you get some information, you get to meet new people, and they sometimes give you great gifts and they sometimes give you poo gifts. But that is just fine. It's just part of the lore that you'll receive whenever you decide to play Slime Ranch. Honestly, between just the lore, the story, and all the things that you're able to do, Slime Rancher really did surprise me, and it's really taken a hold on me, and it's making me really enjoy a single-player game that really, if I wanted to, I could literally run around and try to collect all the slimes and make a habitat or home for all of them and just see what I could do, because you can basically merge two different slimes together, and because you merge those slimes together, you get bigger slimes that... Instead of dropping one plort, they drop two plorts, which is one of each kind that they're part of, but beware. There is very interesting things that happens if you accidentally mix too many plorts into one slime. I don't know, this just feels like a weird conversation to talk about slimes and plorts and eating plorts because plorts what they poop out whenever they, it's weird. But if you fail and you let your slimes eat too many different types of plorts, well, these evil fellers will come out and they'll actually do something really, really interesting. So they don't just hang around. They're actually vicious, maniacal little guys. They eat the slimes and it's kind of sad and depressing. I must warn you, what you're about to see is, oh God. Yeah, just like that, gone in a flash, in an instant. <sighs> Poor slime. Anyway. The main thing we're trying to get to here is Slime Rancher is a load of fun. If you have Game Pass, it is free. I totally recommend you playing the game. Go collect some slimes. Go see what it's all about. See how quickly you can actually get through the game. It's recommended that if you know exactly what you're doing, you could actually get through the game in about 7 to 10 hours. If you're a completionist, you're probably going to take your time and kind of do it all. I myself love to explore and I've found that this game just offers the opportunity to explore, relax, chill, and just really have a good time playing with slimes. So yeah, Slime Rancher, good 7 out of 10 in my book. I recommend it because it's a very chill and relaxed game. It's loads of fun. There's lots of exploring. It's not very difficult unless you want to make it difficult. And I don't know, like just the idea of the trash bag looking slimes eating the other slimes and them just going and then, you know, I know it sounds bad. I know it, it does sound, it sounds, it sounds terrible. Look, play the game. Xbox Game Pass. Fun. Kind of nifty just to see what you can do. Loads of stuff to kind of grind for us to say to upgrade all your crud. Your slime houses, your chicken coops, and your gardens can be upgraded. It's just a lot of great things you can do within the game. So, yeah, uh, get on that. Play that. Yeah, and like and subscribe and all that other stuff, too. You know, uh, 